Uh, let me introduce my colleagues who are present. Uh, Mary Chay from Ward 3, uh, David Grasso at large, Robert White at large, uh, Brandon Todd, Ward 4, Alyssa Silverman at large. I'm missing anybody? And I think there's several other council members on their way. Um, So let me see, since I've sort of started here. Actually, I think what I'll do, uh, Robert, you were going to speak for a couple words. So why don't you speak now? That's okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Council Member Robert White, but I'm also, most importantly, a D.C. resident. Yeah. Who... <laughs> we are here because we believe that it is uh, our local elected officials who should determine our laws, not Congress members who live 2,000 miles away. When you say that you stand on the principle of small government, then you have to stand on that principle even when it's not convenient. Otherwise, it is not a principle, it's just politics. And we are tired of Congress playing politics with our laws and with our city. Jason Chaffetz does not live in our neighborhood. His kids do not go to our school. He is not a D.C. resident. So he has no say in our laws. Now, death with dignity, we know, is a controversial bill, but this is so much bigger than a bill. If they come for our laws and we just let them, then they're going to come for guns. They're going to come for, uh, for the rights of our low-income women, for reproductive rights. They're going to come for our marijuana laws. And then what will we have left? Nothing. Taxes. <laughs> As the only residents in the United States of America who pay taxes but have no vote, they must at least, at least respect our laws. Jason Chaffetz, we did not represent you. You do not speak for us. Go back to Utah. It looks like you have your hands full there. <laughs> Do your job. So on behalf of all D.C. residents, I tell Representative Jason Chaffetz, keep your hands off of D.C. Charles Allen, Ward 6. We're in Ward 6. D.C. Hands off 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 D.C. I'm going to let the congresswoman speak. <laughs> Look, they think they're about to bark up this bill. I wonder what would happen if I just boycotted the thing. <laughs> but I thought I ought to be there to represent you and to have my say. First, let me say how important it is to me to see D.C. here. Uh, this is D.C. It's not just the capital of the United States. It's, it's almost 700,000 living, breathing, tax-paying citizens who, who've come this session to say, we're not going to be bullied out of our laws. Hands off, D.C. You know, I, I, I got a lot to do up here. I should not have to defend D.C.'s local laws. I mean, that's not my business, and it's certainly not the business of people who are unaccountable to the council and the mayor. But this is the second Congress in a row I've had to do it. Uh, last Congress, it was the Reproductive uh, Non-Discrimination Health Choice Act. Uh, where D.C. said you can't discriminate against somebody because of the reproductive choices they made. By the way, how would you even know what reproductive choices they made? Uh, we somehow managed to save that, but that too was a disapproval re resolution. Here comes another disapproval resolution. And what really irks me about this one is that Chairman uh, Chaffetz, uh, Jason Chaffetz wrote an op-ed for the Post that said that the Republicans or the committee had an obligation to, to, to step in. <laughs> That's a real perversion of their role. 
uh, almost a quarter of a century ago, Congress said, you run your own business. The perversion is for Congress to step in simply because it disagrees with what we do. Well, they need to hear from D.C. They need to see D.C. Look, we're not asking them to agree with us. We understand this bill is controversial, although I must say I'm impressed by the Gallup poll that shows that now for decades, uh, uh, two thirds of the Amer almost two thirds of the American people have been for a bill similar to death with dignity that the district uh, passed. But, but forget that. Forget that. Some people disagree with us, even though five states are way ahead of us. We're not the outliers on this. Uh, so some disagree with us. So you, when I go back in, as, <coughs> excuse me, as I will momentarily, what I will be saying is don't vote for death with dignity. Vote for local democracy. Hands off, D.C. Hands off DC. Hands off DC. Hands off DC. You guys are looking Hands great. Are y'all proud of our Congresswoman? Yes. I'm so proud of Eleanor. I'm so proud of my council chair, my colleagues, the mayor, everybody who's really stood with one voice, shoulder to shoulder, to say, Hands off DC. There you go. 700,000 residents that. Let me ask you another question. Did anybody have a chance to vote for Jason Chaffetz? Was he on your ballot? No. Was Mark Meadows on your ballot? No. Was Marco Rubio on your ballot? No. These guys do not have any say here in the District of Columbia. We are the elected leaders, and we know exactly what the residents will do. They will hold us accountable. That's their job. Whether they think we did a good job or a bad job, D.C. residents hold D.C. leaders accountable. That's the way this works. We have got it. We're in the fight for a very long time. This is something that is unprecedented, I think. Uh, what may take place here will be the first time in 27 years that Congress wants to strike something down like this. We've got to organize. We have to organize not just for today, but for tomorrow, for next week, for next month, for a year or two, for as long as it takes. Because, folks, we got to make sure Congress keeps their hands off. DC! Hands off! DC! Hands off! DC! Thank you, Charles. Let me just speak for a couple of minutes. First of all, I want to thank everybody who took the time to come out. This may not be the last time that we rally and protest. So a lot of frustration and a lot of anger in this city over what we have heard members of Congress promise to do to the District of Columbia, which is to interfere, not to really govern, not to take up the complicated issues, but to just piecemeal interfere with some of the legislation that we've done. And that's not the way to govern a city. We have done very well. You know, Congress took almost two centuries to figure out how it was going to exercise its authority under the Constitution. But in 1973, they came up with the current form of government, and we're doing a pretty good job. We have one of the best economies. You know, U.S. Uh, Business uh, World, U.S. News and World Report last week issued a, a list that the Washington region is like the fourth most attractive place to live in the United States. There's a magazine nobody reads called Fiscal Times that said that out of 116 cities, we are number eight in terms of fiscal strength. We're doing, we're doing a pretty good job. That's because Congress delegated governance to the district, to the local government, and we are responsive, as Charles Allen said, as Congresswoman Norton said. So now for them to step in and say that somehow they can do it better is wrong. And that's why we're here. That's, again, why I want to thank everybody who came out today to say, hands off. DC. Hands off. DC. Hands off. DC. David Grosso, you want to say anything? I just want to say how proud I am to be out here and support D.C. D.C. is our hometown. I was born here. I represent this city, not Chavis, not Meadows, not any of these jokers up here. So let's remember that.
The District of Columbia is our city. These are our schools. These are our children. And we need to do what's right by them. And we do every single year. So keep your hands off D.C. 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 Oh, okay. Hello, D.C. I'm Alyssa Silverman, one of the at-large representatives. Thank you for coming out. So I don't know how many of you watched Jason Chaffetz's town hall in Utah. I did. And what I saw is his constituents were angry about what was going on in Utah. They were angry about their health care. They were angry about the public safety in their district. They were angry about their representative not doing his job holding the Trump administration accountable. That's what I saw. I'll tell you what, yeah, I'll tell you what I didn't see. I didn't see a lot of people upset about the district's death with dignity law. I didn't. I didn't. I I saw no one, actually. Um, And so what I, I, you know, so I'm thrilled to see so many district residents out here. I agree with all my colleagues that we have to keep up the fight. But what I think the message is, I'd love to do some robocalling in Representative Chaffetz's district say, yeah, you know what? saying your representative is concerned about death with dignity in D.C. and he's not spending time on the issues that you care about in your district. So anyway, maybe that's an idea we could take up. (laughs) But anyway, let me do the chant to be in line with everyone else. So here we go. Hands off. Hands off. Hands off. Thank you guys very much. Hi, everybody. I'm Mary Che, and I represent Ward 3. (laughs) You know, it really is appalling. It's just appalling. It is true that under the Constitution, Congress can exercise power over the District of Columbia. But there's an expression. It's called abuse of power, abuse of power. There is no basis, no basis whatsoever that somebody from Utah should tell us what we should do about a local issue. This is entirely a local issue. This has nothing to do with the federal government. It has certainly nothing to do with the people of Utah. So what we need to do is get that message out to the rest of the country. They are picking on us, make, making you know, their own ideological statements through us, though we have no chance to tell them because we have no vote. So what we need, we need a vote. We need statehood. Yeah. And I'm, I want to do the chant, too. Hands off. DC. Hands off. DC. Hands off. DC. Councilmember Nadeau. Good evening, everybody. So a couple weeks ago, I sent a letter to Congressman Jason Chaffetz inviting him to participate in my uh, oversight hearings. Um, we even ordered him a little nameplate so that he could sit up on the dais with us. Did he show up? Well, we start on Wednesday, and so far uh, we haven't heard that he's coming. But I'll tell you, um, in that letter, and he didn't come to Mary's, um, in that letter I also offered to help him with his oversight. And so back when I worked in this building, and I was a staffer to someone who sat on the oversight committee, we had a lot of work to do. And I have to tell you, with the president that we have right now, if I was chair of the oversight committee, I'd have a few other things on my mind. So I made a little list. Um, here's an example. Investigating the ways that foreign countries enrich the president through his business ties. Investigating if the president's national security advisor, Michael Flynn, was engaging in diplomacy with Russia before he took office. Shining a light on the president's completely unfounded allegations of widespread voter fraud. Investigating how a Navy SEAL died in the president's first botched military raid. But you know what? It doesn't sound like Representative Chaffetz is interested in in following my lead. um, And and that's unfortunate. Um, Last week, I had the opportunity to reach out to um, my colleagues, our colleagues in the state of Utah, state legislators and local leaders there. And we asked them to show up to that town hall Thursday and let their representative know that they want him to focus on them and not us. And they did. 
They had a different chant that night. They chanted, do your job. <laughs> but today, here together, we're going to say, hands off, D.C. Woo! Brandon Todd, Ward 4. All right, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brandon Todd, and I represent Ward 4 on the D.C. Council, and I couldn't be more proud than to stand here with my colleagues and hundreds and hundreds of D.C. residents to let the Congress of the United States know that we are 700,000 residents strong. We pay a lot of federal taxes, more per capita than any state in the union, and this Instant instance just underscores why we need to be the 51st state, D.C. statehood. And so I'm just really pleased to be out here to see so many people engaged on such an important issue. And we want to tell the Congress, keep your hands off D.C. 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 I'm told the mayor is on her way, so there'll be a few more speakers, but I do again want to thank everybody for coming out. This takes a bit of time, a little bit of uh, energy, but I, it's important. I know there are folks all over the city who are really frustrated, and this is a way for us to speak out, and we're going to keep doing this as long as we have to do it. I do want to say as I'm standing here and trying to look to the back of the crowd, I've never seen a crowd so large. <laughs> Maybe the largest since 2008. Um, it's huge. It's huge. Councilmember McDuffie. Thank you, Chairman Mendel, and thanks to all my colleagues who are here. And thanks to all the D.C. residents who showed up today to say, hands off, D.C., hands off, D.C., hands off, D.C., hands off, D.C. Listen, do not be fooled. This is not about the federal government. This is not about Congress. This is about the 681,000 D.C. residents who know what's best for us. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. We know what's best for us, right? Yeah. Jason Chaffetz doesn't know what's best for us, does he? No. He can go back to where? Utah. Go on back to Utah, Congressman. If you think you know what's best for some residents, go back to the state where they elected you to office. They did not elect you here in the District of Columbia. Am I right? Yeah. Right. We have 681,000 residents. How many people voted for Jason Chaffetz? Yeah. Zero! Go back to Utah and keep your hands off! DC! Hands off! DC! Hands off! DC! Thank you, Kenyon. I also want to thank DC Vote and Bo Shoff. Uh, they did a lot of work to help get folks out, and <clears throat> I'm losing my voice, and do some of the organizing for this. Is the mayor here? Let me introduce our one and only mayor, Muriel Bowser. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Well, hello, Washingtonians. Hello. It's great to see all of you here, and certainly it's always wonderful to talk about our city, county, state, the best city in the world, and soon to be the 51st state. And it's important that each and every time that we're talking to somebody about our Washington, D.C., we tell them who we are and we tell them about our values. We tell them that we take care of ourselves, that we're no more dependent on the federal government than any other state. We tell them that we have 21 consecutively balanced budgets right here in this city. We tell them that we are the fastest improving urban school district anywhere in the United States. We tell them that almost a thousand people move here each and every month, that businesses are moving here, that our government services are fantastic, and that the best thing the federal government can do for us is leave us alone. And we tell them that this council of the District of Columbia has been duly elected by the people of the District of Columbia, and that this Council of the District of Columbia passes the laws for us. And when I put my John Hancock on that law, it should be the law of the land. 
And that is what we are here to tell the Congress of the United States. And we're going to have to tell them each and every day in every way that we can. A lot changed on Election Day on November the 8th, didn't it? But one thing that didn't change, many things didn't change. And those are the values that we hold dear in Washington, D.C. So we have to stand up, speak up, and fight back to preserve those values. So fight back to preserve those values. We believe in a diverse, inclusive city, right? We believe in safe and affordable health care for all. Right. We believe in investing in affordable housing and having a fair criminal justice system. Right. We believe in public education for our kids, because that's what makes our city strong and makes our city grow. So I have a request from the Congress. They want to know how we're spending our money wisely, well, balanced, efficiently, and investing in the values for Washington, D.C. So we're going to have to tell them not just today, but we have to tell them every day. And this is what I expect, D.C. It could get tough. It could get really tough. And when we look around, guess who we need to see? Washingtonians standing up. Will you be with us? Will you be with us? Now, what if they come and try to put your mayor in jail? Will you be with us? What if we have to go down and testify in front of the Congress? Will you be with us? Will you be with our neighbors when our neighbors need help? We're going to have to make sure we stay focused on the values that are important to Washington, D.C. Now, some of that means being here and talking to the Congress, and some of it means being smart and strategic, looking and being prepared for our vulnerabilities, but also taking advantage of any opportunities that we see. And my job is to do both. So I want to thank everybody, D.C. Vote, the Council of the District of Columbia, who's so right to be focused on telling Congress to keep their hands off D.C. Let's hear it for Governor Bowser. Hands off, D.C. All right, we've also got, of course, our shadow senators and representative. Let's have Michael Brown say a quick word. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. I'm glad to be here with my colleagues, and I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Everybody's talking about defending the rights of D.C., and I admire my colleagues for doing that. But I'm going to take a different tact after 200 years. I have been a campaigner. Campaigns are what we do in the District of Columbia. And I want you to remember this name. The name is uh, uh, Damien, uh, Damien Kidd. And Mr. Kidd is throwing his hat in the ring to run against Jason Chaffetz. And I'm going to hold a fundraiser for Mr. Kidd. And I'm going to go to Utah and I'm going to defend the District of Columbia by coming after Mr. Kidd. And when we're done with him, we're going to go into Maryland, New Jersey and North Carolina and come against the congressmen that are attacking our laws there. Because that's what we do in D.C. We're campaigners. And we're going to send Mr. Uh, uh, we're going to send Representative Chaffetz back to Utah. Let him run for governor. Thank you. But keep your hands off D.C. And my colleague Paul Strauss, the senior senator from D.C., would like to say a few things. You know, I knew it would be uh, would get bad. I just didn't think it would get this bad this fast. But wow. Uh, We know what we're up against. We're not going to let them get away with it. We're going to fight them right here in the House of Representatives. And should we fail here, which we don't intend to, uh, we will continue this fight across the hallway in the Senate and make sure that these laws, which are so important to our community, are going to be preserved. Uh, Our delegation has traveled to Iowa, Nevada, all around the country, Uh, all around the world sometimes, and uh, if we have to go to Utah, if we have to go to these places, we we will do that. So let me bring up Representative Garcia. 
Buenas tardes. Good afternoon, everybody. This is exactly what we ought to be doing, coming out here. We don't do it today, but we need to do it more often because it's all about agitating and continuing the resistance. You know, at a time when we should be talking about immigration reform, how do we bring uh, our, how do we make our cities more, more safe and secure, uh, talking about increasing the minimum wage, here we are talking about the basic principle of equality. This is a shame. So I hope that the world sees that people in the District of Columbia are treated like second-class second citizens in the largest democracy in the world. It's a shameful situation, very shameful. So, again, as it, as it, as it has been stated by our counsel so willingly, if uh, uh, Representative Chaffetz wants to uh, get back into local legislating, then he needs to go back to the 3rd District of Utah and do that. That's exactly what he needs to do that. And so, how does it go? Hands off D.C. Hands off D.C. Si se puede. All right, so many people to thank for today. Um, I want to make sure we give a big thanks again to DC Vote. Text hands off DC. You can take action by texting hands off DC to 52886. I don't know what happens when you do that, but it's going to be good. It's going to be really, really good. Absolutely. I'm sure. That's right. Thank you, everybody. Listen, we may not have. What we have, though, is the Capitol building in our backyard, and we have to have our voices heard. We have to stand shoulder to shoulder. I, again, I'm so proud that we've got the mayor, the chair, the council, the attorney general, our shadow delegation standing side by side to tell Congress to keep their hands off D.C. 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 Thank you, everybody. Woo!